invasive species have invaded Florida, damaging native plant communities, fish, and wildlife habitat, and the fragile ecosystems they and we depend upon. What do these invaders look like? What damage do they do? What is being done to control them? To begin, we need to define what an invasive species is. The way we think about invasive species is we think of them as biological pollution. An invasive species is an introduced species that causes either economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. For instance, if invasive aquatic plants are allowed to take over a water body, they can make it unusable for boaters, displace native plant communities, harm fish and wildlife populations, and clog flood control structures. My name is Garrett Snyder. I'm the Vegetation Management Section Manager at the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Hydrilla is an invasive submerged aquatic species that the district manages to maintain navigation to prevent damage to our native plant communities. It also helps improve the water quality. It grows very quickly. It grows from the bottom all the way to the surface of the water, oftentimes topping out at the very top of the water. Here's a great example of a successful invasive vegetation treatment at Edward Medard Reservoir in Hillsborough County. On the left, you see the invasive species hydrilla that is taking over portions of the lake before the treatment. And on the right is the post-treatment, where you can clearly see the hydrilla dead where it sinks to the bottom and decomposes. Cogan grass is one of the most invasive plants throughout the United States and throughout the world, in fact. It's one of the most problematic species because it has few natural predators. It spreads rapidly from seeds and it inhabits a lot of disturbed areas. Hi, I'm Chris Reed. I'm the land management section manager at the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Cogan grass is highly fire adapted. It burns very readily, kind of sterilizes the soil underneath it because it burns so hot. There are numerous upland invasive plants as well. Plants like Brazilian pepper and old world climbing fern cause similar problems in upland habitats and are also difficult to eliminate. Brazilian pepper was introduced to Florida as a decorative Christmas plant. In the case of ornamental plants that were brought in for their flowers, an example of this is water hyacinth that was brought to Florida in the 1800s. They put it in their backyard pond and now is expanded throughout the entire state of Florida. Old world climbing fern crowds out native plants, diminishing important wildlife food sources, and allows fire to burn to the tops or canopy of trees, killing the trees and allowing fire to burn even in wetlands. Removal is difficult and costly, so these plants are carefully treated with herbicides to control them. There are also ongoing pilot projects using what's called biocontrol, or insects that feed on the plant. Caesar's weed is another species that we routinely deal with here at the district. It's often found in hammocks, especially in areas that have been disturbed by feral hogs rooting. The species has kind of like a burr, if you will, kind of like a sand spur that is spread through animal and people. Invasive plants multiply very quickly. The seeds can be carried a great distance by birds. This makes it very difficult to contain these species. The Southwest Florida Water Management District uses a practice called maintenance control to manage invasive species infestations. Maintenance control is the coordinated effort to maintain these invasive species at the lowest levels possible. Our goal is to keep invasive plant species at the lowest possible level so they are not impacting our native plant communities. Unfortunately, eradication of these species is often not possible. But plants aren't the only problem facing the region. The number one invasive animal on district lands is the feral hog. The feral hog is very problematic because it likes to root up the soils, it could lead to water quality issues as well as erosion. Since the Spanish explorers first brought hogs as a food source, there has been an ever-growing problem with these four-legged invaders. Feral hogs now number in the hundreds of thousands in Florida. They prey on native wildlife, compete with native species for food, and transmit diseases to other wildlife, livestock, and humans. Feral hogs disturb natural systems as well as our levees and water control structures. The district manages the feral hog population on the lands we're responsible for, utilizing hunting as well as trapping. And there are new problems in the southern region of the district. District staff are monitoring for pythons, iguanas, as well as tegu, among other species. It is important for folks who have these species as pets and who can no longer take care of or risk having them escape to take advantage of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Pet Amnesty Days. 
education is really important. We don't want people bringing new invasives in and we want people to be able to remove invasives that may be growing in their yards, in the landscape, make sure that they're planting Florida friendly plants that aren't going to be causing issues. By limiting these invaders impacts on district conservation lands, the district is protecting natural systems and our water resources. For more information on invasive species, visit watermatters.org slash invasive species.